Hello everyone and welcome to this course on modern application development. So what did all of these things that we considered in terms of searching for data in some storage mechanism, what has that got to do with searching in a database? Okay. The most common databases have a so-called tabular structure, right? There are many tables, each of which has many columns, right? So for example, I might have something called a student table. Right, where as you can imagine, it would have a roll number, it would have a name, it would probably have a department and so on. Okay, And I might have another course table which has an ID number for the course, a name, a description right? and then I could also have a sort of combined table right? where I have a student ID and a course ID which basically tells me which student is registered for which course. right? So as long as I can create these kind of tables, right? it means that I can store a lot of useful data and we have already come across this in the previous thing. This is basically the most important part as far as model structure is concerned. right? We need to be able to create relationships between different columns in a, uh, between different tables right? and those relationships are what ultimately drives the usefulness of the application. Now, if I want to search through all students, right, I can't guarantee that the order in which I get the list of students is going to already be sorted. Okay? I have to basically make the entries as and when they come and register. right? So, what should I do? Should I have something, you know, build a big array somewhere in memory? right in order to store this table because after all tables are well suited to arrays right they have the same kind of structure right there is a particular memory location or a row number where if i go i will find all the data corresponding to one particular entry so it looks as though maybe i can use arrays the problem is two people can have the same name right so i then need to find something that's unique i assign a roll number that's better because you know roll numbers are guaranteed to be unique okay so what should I do? Should I just sort of, you know, index, uh, I mean, just store the data as it is, or I can create something called an index. Okay. An index is actually pretty much just a copy of the data present in one of the columns of a table, but now in sorted order. Okay. So you basically take all the roll numbers and you create an index out of it, right? And what does that index do? It basically creates another copy, right? But now this is sorted and also has the appropriate links into the correct row in the original table, right? So let's say that I want, I have an index on roll number and I want to search for a, the entry corresponding to a given roll number. I just search in this sorted list. I know I can do that in O of log n time. And once I have the particular entry that I have found, I just go to the actual table and pull out that row and get all the other entries, right? The student's name, the department and all the other information I need. So building the right kind of index is very important to the performance of your application, right? You need to know what kind of index to build and what is it that will change the behavior in terms of, you know, if you don't construct the right kind of index, it can do pretty poorly in searching. If you create too many indexes, it might end up taking up too much space, right? So there are a lot of engineering trade-offs that come in over here. Now, obviously, right, uh, we don't have the time to get into all of this in detail. And in fact, it's not even possible simply because you might not choose the exact same database that I recommend or that I have used in some application. You might have a different reason for finding something else. So the point is you should be able to look up documentation and find out more about it by looking for it. Okay, And a good example is the MySQL database. They in fact have a lot of documentation right online, it's all available out there and they talk about the performance comparisons of different kinds of indexes. Okay, In particular, they consider two things, something called a B tree and the other thing called a hash. The B tree is basically like I said, a variant of the binary tree. right? and is the most common kind of index. Okay, So I would strongly recommend that anyone who's at least interested in you know, building 
larger scale applications. If you're building a very small application, probably most of this doesn't matter. But the moment you want to go even to a few hundred entries, these things start to matter, okay? So, and anyway, it's good practice to sort of know the tools that you're working with, right? So if you are using MySQL, where should you look, right? And this is an example from that link that I just showed you. For uh, what we can see in MySQL, for example, or pretty much any indexed database is, let's say I have a table in which I'm searching, so I want to do select star, and the search condition is key column like Patrick percent, okay? Now, what exactly does this search do? It search, it will search through the database for all entries like, let's say, Patrick X, Patrick YZA, right? All those entries will match, but let's say PATTRIC will not match, right? Because it's a different name, okay? So, the point is, because of the fact that it is Patrick, you know, I know the beginning part of the name, right? I can do this kind of binary search in order to narrow down the elements that I need to look at in more detail, okay? Because I can say for sure that anything which does not start with a P can straight away be eliminated. Among those that start with E, I can eliminate things that don't have the A as the next letter, right? How do I do this? I basically go through the tree and narrow down the section within which I need to look, okay? And because of the fact that it's starting from the first letter, right, I can actually take this entire tree and build up a specific subsequence which says, right, okay, this was the root, this was all things starting with P, right, this was all things with second letter A, this was all things with uh, T, and so on, okay. And essentially, eventually, I'll come down and say, okay, you know, this is the subtree that I really need to be looking at, right, and I can discard the rest of it. Now, what happens if I have a query which goes something like this, pat percent something else, okay? Now, this is a bit more tricky because what has happened over here is I can go up to PAT, up to this point in the graph. After that, I need to start searching, okay? So all I can do is narrow it down up to this point and from there, I then need to switch over and go into some other kind of string search, right? Where I basically look at all possible entries for the fourth character and then see five, six, seven, do they match with underscore CK, okay? At least this PAT part of it allowed me to use the index. But what if my search was something like this, right? Here, the first letter itself is percent, which means that, which way should I go? I don't know, maybe there is a P somewhere over here, maybe there is a P somewhere over here, maybe there is a P somewhere over here. I don't know how many letters can be present before the P, which means that I can't use an index. I can't I can't use the tree that I have constructed at all, okay? Similarly, if I'm trying to say, okay, there's a key column, which needs to be like some other column, okay? I don't know because I'll basically need to look at this column, I'll need to look at this column and I will need to then search through all of them and find out whether there's a connection or not, okay? Which means that this index, which was created on the key column is of no use for answering a query of this sort, okay? So please keep this in mind and the reason is simply because ultimately you are constructing queries. For the most part, at least in this course, we are trying to use an ORM like SQL Alchemy, which takes care of a lot of this for you the problem is it's not going to tell you if the queries that you are constructing are poor, okay? So if you do some kind of complicated query or something which does not make use of the indexes, SQL Alchemy is not really going to tell you about it. There are ways of sort of profiling the database which will finally come up with information that would be useful and tell you that, okay, look, this is not really the way you should have done it. You can also create so-called multi-column indexes, right? So let's say that, you know, I have three columns in a table, right? Or rather, I have many columns, right? And I use this as index one, let's say this one as index two, and this one as index three, right? The order of the index has nothing to do with the order of the columns in the table, right? It's a compound index. So what does that do? It basically takes an element from here, 
takes the corresponding element from here, takes the corresponding element from the i3 column and puts them together and creates this new string, right? And this is what the index is created on, okay? What do I mean by creating an index? Like we said, right? I mean, it basically creates a copy of all of them and sorts them with links back into the database. So how this would work in practice is effectively, this means that it is first sorted on index one, right? As an example, let's say that, you know, I want to create a compound index on date of birth, city of birth, and the name of a person, right? And what it would do is I would create this compound index, first sort on index one, which is the date of birth, then on index two, the city of birth, and finally on index three, which is the name of the person, okay? If I wanted to query for all people born on the same date, perfect, right? It just picks up the first entry, right? And it's able to narrow it down and tell me exactly who are all the people born on a given date. Born on a given date in a given city, again, good, okay? But born on a given date and with the same name, but not necessarily in the same city, not particularly good, right? Because I can't make use of this combined query across date of birth and city of birth at this point. I will only be able to query for those born in the same date of birth. Then I'll have to narrow down the ones with the same name. I can't use this index for that. I might have another index, right? And then finally, go and narrow down the city of birth, okay? So how you construct indexes has to be determined by the application developer. You need to sort of have an idea of what kind of queries you are likely to see in practice. And based on that, try and optimize. So, you know, uh, once again, to just reiterate, if we have multi indexes, right, and I had a part which says index part one, index part two, and this other part, it's not really using index part three, but this is still good. At least it's making use of index part one and index part two, okay? Or here, if I have index equal to one, right, at least this part of it, it's able to use. The index equal to two thing, it's not really going to use. Right. What if I had index part one equal to hello and index part three equal to five, but I've not specified what index part two is, it will sort of just ignore this and do the indexing based on index part one. Okay. And let's say that, you know, if I had something, you know, index equal to one and index equal to two or index equal to one and index equal to three, it can use the index on index one, but it can't really make use of these second right, the two and three indexes, okay? So the search engine inside the database will automatically figure out what's the best that it can do and try and optimize for that, okay? On the other hand, what if I ignore index part one, right? This is bad. It basically can't use that index at all, right? Over here, index equal to one or a equal to 10, it's, you know, I can't really use the index at all because the or a equal to 10 is like a completely different thing which cannot really use an index at all, right? And I have something else which basically says, this is again, see the problem over here, it's, it's an or statement, right? Whereas an index is essentially anding, right? It's taking index part one equal to something and index part two equal to something else. An or breaks that, right? So there are many queries that you can easily create in this way which are unfriendly to these kind of multi-indexes, okay? So should you even use multi-indexes? Should you use only single indexes? All that is essentially something which, you know, you need to go much deeper into databases in order to understand them in detail. Why are they sort of important for an app developer to know? Because it, there's no unique answer that's going to come from the database side, right? Only you as the application developer can say, okay, you know, in this particular case, I will need to access these entries more. And therefore, I should create an index on this, okay? The database at best, at best can give you recommendations saying, look, you probably should build an index on this. More importantly, there will be database engines that sort of keep track of the queries that you have been running and then can sort of recommend options where you should be creating indexes to get better performance. Now, finally, hash indexes, right? This is something which is again available in MySQL. But remember, like I said, the, the use of a hash table is only for equality comparisons. In other words, 
what it's doing is taking what you are searching for, let's say the name of a person and computing some function of that and directly saying, look, this is where the entry for this person is stored. If I can create something of that sort, then fantastic, right? I mean, it's going to be faster than any of the B tree based searching that I could do earlier. But it cannot, for example, handle a range of names, right? All people whose names begin with N, right? It can't really do something of that sort. You give it an exact name, it can search present or not present. Similarly, if you need to search for all people whose name begins with N and, you know, order them by age or something of that sort, it doesn't help, okay? So where it is applicable, it can be very fast, but the question is, where is it applicable, okay? It's provided, right, because there can be applications where you need to use something of this sort. MySQL, for example, does have something of this sort. So, you know, if you find that it's the right fit for your application, you should use it. So various databases have their own, you know, takes on query optimization. MySQL has a whole lot of information, like I said, you know, what I just showed you. SQLite has something about optimization over you. Postgres, in fact, has, you know, even, it's sort of a research database in some sense. And they even have things like, you know, using genetic algorithms in order to optimize query structures, okay? So these are all different possibilities that can be done. And in fact, is to some extent, is the topic of research even now, okay? A large part of databases are very well studied, so there's not too much new happening over here. But on the other hand, there are places where you might be able to make some fundamental changes as well. So to summarize, setting up the queries properly can have a huge impact on the application performance. Right? And building proper indexes is crucial to search. Now, you might think that, you know, I'm only going to build small apps, but you don't know at what point it stops being small and starts being significant, right? Because even something with a few hundred entries in a database can get really badly impacted if your indexes and your data store storage mechanisms are bad, okay? The moment you hit a few thousands, right, already log to base two of 1000 is 10, which means that either you are taking a thousand steps to find something or you're taking only 10 steps, okay? So you have a factor of 100 difference, okay, in terms of what you are likely to spend in searching for something. That's a very rough estimate, but still, you know, you get the idea. So don't sort of underestimate the value of creating the right kind of indexes. Now, creating too many indexes, on the other hand, is a bad idea. You will end up wasting space and it just confuses the database. It doesn't know how to search and or rather which index is the right one to use. Okay. And ultimately, you know, this whole idea of how to structure the data and put it properly, the so-called normalization step that is used in databases, right, which again is completely out of scope of this course. That's something which you need to pay attention to, especially if you expect your application to grow larger with time.